6.2 talks about homogeneous linear equations with constant coefficients. So we start off just like we did back in the days. This is a third order linear differential equation with constant coefficients. We let pi equal e to the RT. In this case, we know the drill by now. Uh, this is on page 332. So, if I let y equal e to the rt, then this is going to be e to the rt times r squared minus 3r squared minus r plus 3. Now, this doesn't factor in traditional. This is r cubed. These are not going to factor in traditional terms. Not all of them, at least. This one does. e to the rt does not equal 0. Oh, boy. r squared e to r minus 3 minus r minus 3 equals 0, so that is r minus 3 into r squared minus 1 equals 0, or r minus 3 into r minus 1 into r plus 1 equals 0, so r equals a 3, 1, and negative 1. So y equals c sub 1 e to the 3t. They want it in terms of x in this case, I keep on forgetting. Old habits are hard to die. Plus c sub 2 e to the x plus c sub 3 e to the negative x. That's the solution. One third of this. Now, if those don't factor in traditional techniques, which is grouping two terms, three terms, or you know, then you're going to try to look at a section that I added before this, and it says if you need to review how to multiply poly, uh, uh, factor polynomials look at that section it's like section 4.4 from my college algebra class you should look at that if you have an issue with how we're going to factor the following problem again this is a linear differential equation with constant coefficients we let y equal e to the rt this would be e to the rt that would be r cubed plus twice r squared minus 19r minus 20 e to the rt cannot equal 0 I need to factor r cubed plus 2r squared minus 19r minus 20 equal to 0 so I know that possible factors are plus or minus 1 2 4 5 10 and 20 so again if you need to review that I put a video for you there <laughs> we try one and see how that works if you put a 1 in there, you get 1 plus 2 minus 19 minus 20. That's not going to equal 0, so 1 didn't work. 1 is out. We try negative 1. Negative 1 plus 2 plus 19 minus 20. That is twenty one minus 21. That does work. So I try negative 1. It did work. Well, negative 1, 1. 2, negative 19, negative 20. I'm factoring that. So this is r squared plus r minus 20. That is really r plus 5 into r minus 4 times r plus 1. So here we have the solutions to be r equal negative 1, negative 5, and 4. So really y equal, man, and again, the same issue. It's going to follow me for a long time. They want the answer in terms of x. Again, t, x, it doesn't really matter. It's the same thing. So we know that y equal c sub 1 e to the negative x plus c sub 2 e to the negative 5 x plus c sub 3 e to the 4x. If you want to call them t, I really don't mind. But since they want them in terms of x, we should keep it the way they want. But you know, t, x, it's all the same. Next problem again. So pretty much, you know the drill. We're going to tackle on all different combinations of those. Let y equal e to the rt. So e to the rt times r cubed. 
minus r squared plus 2 equal to 0. This doesn't factor into a traditional method. <coughs> so this problem, the only possible factors, rational factors of this, are 1 and minus 2. Factors of 2. So 1 doesn't work, it's obvious, and negative 1 doesn't work. So we're going to go for 2 and see if that works. Actually, negative 1 does work. Negative 1 minus 1 plus 2. That does work. That gives you a 0. So if negative 1 works, pretty much we're done. You could use long division if you wish. So this problem has r equal negative 1, and they have, oh, crap. And that's r squared minus 2r plus 2 equal to 0. That's r squared minus 2r. Take half of the negative number and square it. So r equal 1 plus or minus radical i, radical negative 1, which is i. So we know that y is going to equal c sub 1 e to the negative x plus, and this is going to give e to the, normally e to the t cosine and sine t, we're going to use x, e to the x cosine of x plus e to the x sine of x. And that will be my general solution. Same deal, y equal e to the r x, e to the r x times r cubed plus 5r squared minus 13r plus 7 equal to 0. e to the rx does not equal to 0. So I have r cubed plus 5r squared minus 13r plus 7 equal to 0. And here if I put 1 in, I'll get, uh, well, 13 minus 13. 1 works. Awesome. So this is going to be r equal 1 and r squared plus 6r minus 7 equal to 0. That is r plus 7r minus 1 equal to 0. So I have r equal 1, negative 7, and 1. So in this case, y would equal c sub 1 e to the negative 7x plus c sub 2. Those are the same. So how do you differentiate between those? You multiply by x to make those three solutions linearly independent. Ten is next. Linear equation with constant coefficients. It doesn't factor the traditional method, but let's see if I put 1 in there, I'll get negative 10 plus 4. That doesn't work. And if I try negative 1, I'll get negative 1 plus 3 plus 4 minus 6. Negative 1 plus 3 plus 4 minus 6. So that's 7 minus 7 that does work. So negative 1. <coughs> so this is r squared plus 2r minus 6. So that's really r equal negative 1 and r squared plus 2r. 
take half of them, the number and square. So this is going to give y c equals c sub 1 e to the negative x, plus this is going to be e to the negative x times the cosine of 2x plus sine of 2x, and of course you want different coefficients in front of those. Of course you're welcome to separate those if you want. And there's my general solution. So we get the drill on how this works. I had a couple more, you know what? Yeah, why not? Let's do them. Might as well. So let y equal e to the rx, then e to the rx times r cubed plus 5r squared plus 9r minus 9 equals 0. e to the rx can never equal 0. Here, if I plug 1 in, I get, nope, it doesn't work because I'll get negative 9 plus 9 plus the 16. <coughs> so that didn't work. I tried the uh, <coughs> I tried the negative one, see if that works. Negative one plus five minus nine. Nope, that didn't work either. I see I copied this wrong, that's a 3, so that is 5, that 1 does work, now that doesn't work, 1 doesn't work all the time, the first 2 integers work 85% of the time, the first 3 integers work almost 98% of the time. So this is r squared plus 6r plus 9. So I have r equal 1, and this is r plus 3 squared, and r equal negative 3 multiplicity 2, so y equal c sub 1 e to the x plus c sub 2 e to the negative 3x plus c sub 3x e to the negative 3x. Multiplying by x would make those two linearly independent solutions. And let's look at the last of these types. So here, we're going to figure out how this works. We will take r equal 1. They're all positive. There's no way that's going to work. Negative 1. 1 minus 2 plus 10 minus 18 plus 9, 19, 20 minus 20, negative 1 works, very good. And that's factors. That is r cubed plus r squared plus 9r plus 9. So here I have r equal negative 1, and I have r squared into r plus 1 plus 9 into r plus 1, r plus 1 into r squared plus 9. So I have r equal negative 1 again, and I have r equal plus or minus 3i. So out of all of this, y is going to equal c sub 1 e to the negative x plus c sub 2 e to the negative x times x. That's those two. And this is going to give plus c sub 3 the sine of 3t plus c sub 4 the cosine of 3t. 3x.
and what's left suppose they give us the following so how is this gonna work well r equal negative one multiplicity two y equal and this is gonna be c sub one e to the negative x plus c sub two x e to the negative x this is three times That's done. That's one of a kind. This is going to give plus or minus i. And this is going to give plus or minus 2i. All of that mess is my general solution. Of course, the more fun of this of this is free to find coefficients for such a 10 by 10 matrix. That would be awesome. Well, there's one. Last problem. Actually, they want us to solve the initial value problems. Well, this is a linear equation with constant coefficients. We let y equal e to the r x. This would be r cubed. 7r squared plus 14r plus 8 and all of that is multiplied by e to the negative x of course e to the rx e to the rx is going to equal 0 it has to be that r cubed plus 7r squared plus 14r plus 8 possible factors are factors of 8 plus or minus so if I try one let me write that so you can see it better Okay, if I put 1 in there, that's going to be all positives. That really doesn't work. If I aim for negative 1, then <coughs> 1, negative 1, minus 4, that's minus 15, plus 15, negative 1 works. Okay, so that is r equal negative 1. This is r squared plus 6r plus 8. That is 4 and 2. It's a double negative. y equals c sub 1 e to the negative x plus c sub 2. e to the negative 4x plus c sub 3 e to the negative 2x. That's the general solution. Now I'm given initial conditions y of 0. is 1, y prime is negative 3, and y double prime, if you can let the derivative of this, it's going to be positive c sub 1, plus 16 c sub 2, plus uh, minus 2, Minus, minus 2 times minus 2, that's going to be plus 4. And this equals 30. So, pretty much, solve it. So, if I take row 1, 
plus row 2, put the result in row 2, and take row 2 plus row 3, put the result in row 3. This is what I'll get. If I add those two rows, I'll get 0, negative 3, negative 1, and negative 2. And if I add those two rows, I'm sorry, take that back. If I add those two rows, I'll get 0 at 12, at 2, and at 10. Now to make that a 0, I will take 4 times row 2 plus row 3 and row 3. That's the next stage. So multiply by 4, that's 0, negative 12, negative 4, negative 8, and if I add those, I should get a 0, a negative 2, and a 2. That indicates that C sub 3 is a negative 1, and negative 3 C sub 2 plus 1 equal negative 2. So that's negative 3. So C sub 2 equal a 1. So C sub 1 plus a 1 minus 1 equal one so C sub 1 equal 1. So my solution becomes y equal C sub 1 which is 1 so that's e to the negative x plus e to the negative 4x minus e to the negative 2x and that would be my final solution. And that's pretty much it for this section.